One Nation's support base is in regional and rural areas. And it's here that uh, access to health of any kind, almost any service that you can imagine, is all second class. So completely forgotten by the large parties, um, both Liberal and Labor. So that's why, you know, we're around to largely represent people who don't ha currently have a voice. Um, the way that I've come to understand disability is actually through individual cases. Um, so I'd just like to tell you about a couple of those. Um, so one of these cases is a uh, Down syndrome woman who um, did have a physical health problem. Uh, she entered into one of our two major hospitals here in South Australia and she recovered from her physical ailment. Um, but she stayed in the hospital for nearly a year because no one could find a suitable place, a suitable group home for her to go to. So she occupied a bed in an acute care bed in a big hospital here. Um, she was bored. She wandered around um, the hospital. Um, she wasn't happy there and they really weren't all that happy there either because there wasn't somewhere for her to go. The second is the case of a man who has very complicated problems who went into another of our major hospitals um, and hasn't been able to leave because he requires two people 24 hours a day to look after him and they've not been able to find any support provider that can give him the sort of care that he needs on an ongoing basis nor the kind of accommodation that he needs. So the sort of people who come to uh, Pauline Hanson's um, party are people who are not experiencing uh, the system are uh, working for them. I want to say right from the beginning that uh, we support the National Disability Insurance Scheme, but it is an insurance scheme, which means that uh, it has to be paid for. And I haven't heard anybody tonight uh, talk about the cost. I've heard about some fabulous ideas, uh, but I've not heard about any cost. And we actually have a finite budget, which means if we pay for one thing, we don't necessarily pay for something else. And it is time that the scheme was properly costed and that put to the Australian people so that they understand when government is formed by whichever of the major parties it is, what we will forego in order to do this. We think the greatest risk to the system is it being uh, so expensive that it's not funded. And uh, it is a childlike dream to think that we can do absolutely everything outlined tonight, however desirable it is. So um, that's our concern. We'd like to see it paid for, but we don't know how it's going to be how it's going to be funded. Um, so I too am going to um, follow Mr Shorten's um, approach and I'm not going to take up too much time because I would prefer to answer questions um, for people. But our party is very, very concerned, particularly for people in rural and regional areas who, even if they're completely able-bodied, are already second-class citizens. Uh, we have very high suicide rates in regional areas. Uh, there's absolutely uh, no one, um, no one for them to see. Uh, when there are acute episodes, they end up going into a major hospital for a night, and then they're returned back. There's no support out there for them. So finding qualified people and being able to pay people properly. I don't think the Australian community at large has yet come to understand what the real cost of doing this is. And while I think these costs are worth having uh, for people, uh, it is time for the big parties, uh, Labor and Liberal, to actually tell us what it's costing, what are the benefits, and what's going wrong? Because what I hear from people is that, that they're charged on their plans for people who don't even turn up for care. 
I mean, I spoke to somebody quite recently who has very bad arthritis in her hands. She has other problems also, but she can't dress herself and she relies on someone coming every morning uh, to help her with these things. Now, sometimes people don't come. They just don't turn up. But she tells me that whether they turn up or they don't, it comes out of her plan. And she thinks there's something wrong. And she might be, and she looks, she might be right. I've heard from carers who tell me that they that they would have an hour in the morning and then they go have to go a long distance to go somewhere else. And then uh, there might be a few hours in the afternoon. And really it's not economic for them to work because nobody looks at it from their point of view. So there's just a lot wrong with the system and we do need to have an open discussion uh, about it and um, so that we can find a way forward for, for people who are either born with a disability or acquire one. And plenty of my friends have acquired them. So look, thank you very much for having me.